Hello there everyone and welcome to this channel. My name is Savvy from saanatomy.com and today for this video we're going to be working on sculpting a bear. So get your reference images, get out your drawing pad and let's hop into ZBrush and get started. Ah. So to start things off like we usually do, if you've seen our previous videos, we're going to block out this animal using really simple geometry or shapes. Now, remember, this isn't entirely necessary. You don't always have to start off like this. You can also start off with ZBrush's example projects or their mannequins, which are really cool subtools that uh, you can actually pose and then sculpt on. But uh, usually blocking out is one of the easiest ways of getting all your details out there, your major forms out there and controlling the silhouette really before actually going into the major details and major sculpting a uh, uh, face and whatnot. So we're going to start this off with our basic shapes, just blocking everything out like we usually do. Basically, the beginning phases are just us trying to make things a lot easier for ourselves in the future. So imagine you want to sculpt the pectoral muscle without doing the um, block outs first. So you would have to go in with your clay buildup or your standard brush and you actually have to bring out those those shapes first and then come in with your damn standard and draw in the overlapping features. Um, it's way easier to do it when there's a block out already placed. So basically we're just skipping a whole lot of steps by using these block outs. And what's really cool is you can go to really great details with these block outs. You can have way more features, you can have way more connections and that that in itself is just helping you cheat a lot when it comes to the sculpting phase you're just gonna merge everything and then hit dynamesh and you're just gonna smooth things out and uh, just focus on the connections between the muscles and fixing things that uh, don't look right and moving things around so this blocking out can can be really simple and it can also be really complex you can really have a detailed block out uh, just using simple geometry and simple subtools, uh, you can get a lot of information from that. So that's what I generally do whenever I'm starting a character, animal, creature, whatever I'm working on, I block it out always. And I cannot stress this enough. It is very important to do that. Um, it's For people who are already used to creating characters or creating animals or creating creatures, um, that's very different for them. They can already just start working from a single sphere and start moving things around and like pulling shapes and then they get like a final uh, a final cut or a final creature right at the end that looks amazing. But usually you just want to block things out because it makes life so much easier for you and it just it just helps you a lot to understand all the information that you're putting into the character that you're working on or the animal that you're working on. So I'm just blocking out the major muscle groups I know uh, I would need to focus on. Uh, the smaller ones I will go in and sculpt them myself. So right now I'm just focusing on the major ones. There are also major ones that I did not focus on. I just ignored because I know that I can sculpt them. Um, or I could go in with the dam standard or like the clay build up and just focus on those via sculpt, uh, such as the details on the external abdominal oblique or the rectus abdominis. So I'm just focusing on major groups such as the latissimus dorsi and the uh, brachiocephalicus. So just those muscle groups um, will be the ones that I block out more. And then the rest, I'll just go in and sculpt them myself. Fortunately, this bear skeleton model was available, so I am using that as a guide. Uh, you can also do the same whenever you're starting off with this bear or any other creature that you're starting off with. Um, it's not always necessary. You can also have reference images thrown into the background within ZBrush itself, and you can just literally just copy or trace over the uh, image that you that you're using as a reference and you could just place your basic shapes over that 
Um, but usually you'll see me using something that's already pre-made such as the skeletons or uh, sometimes I would just start off from scratch just using reference images and just merge everything together at a later stage. What I like to do sometimes when I'm getting ready to merge things and then start sculpting is I tend to merge, I try to keep things as separate as possible. So I will merge things like the arms and then just focus on the arms and then merge the body, like the major parts of the body, the torso and everything, and then the legs. And then when I feel comfortable, I will merge them all together afterwards. So it's a lot of back and forth between the merge and dynamesh and Z remesher. So essentially somewhere at some point you will lose a lot of detail. You lose like most of the crisp information because we have to go down into a lower subdivision level and then we can start dividing going upwards. So controlling the subdivision level ourselves. Um, because with Dynamesh, you're just going to have like a really dense mesh. Uh, so yeah, this is what I usually do sometimes. I just keep things separate. And then uh, once I'm done with those, I'll just merge them together. So as you can see here, after merging everything and hitting Dynamesh, um, you can see that we skipped a lot of steps in terms of sculpting the major forms that we would have to sculpt if we just started off on a simple sphere or a less detailed block out. Now we have enough information to get started properly and we don't have to focus on things such as the silhouette. Well, actually, we always have to focus on the silhouette. I'm just saying right here, we don't have to try and make an entire body out of a sphere without um, enough information. Now we could just go in and have some fun with the, with the details without really changing or breaking the mesh that much. So right now we're just sculpting in the finer details such as the eyes, the mouth, the, like the muscles on the face, the masetta and all those kind of muscles. By the way, this um, the way this bear is standing up, it's posed, uh, it's a really great way of showing people how similar humans and other animals are um, on uh, an anatomy level. So you can take the echo shape of a human and you can put it side by side to uh, the echo shape of a bear. And you could see that there are a lot of muscles that are very similar. Obviously, the differences would be the scale and the positioning and the length of certain muscles and all that um, but usually they're, they're all the same um, it's really hard to see it with a lion for example because a lion's um, body is normally on all fours and the some bones and some muscles are stretched more than uh, that of humans like if you just for interest sake, you can look at the bones of a human and compare it to the bones of a lion. You'll just see that the bones of a lion, when it comes to the feet, they're just like um, extended a little more. So uh, it's really great to use a bear because bears can just stand up straight uh, and you can actually start seeing the similarities. I'm actually realizing now that I probably should have blocked out the leg muscles as well such as the gastrocnemius um, and the bassus femoris and all the other muscles around it um, mainly because sometimes working with uh, the dam standard on a lower resolution it kind of just crumbles your entire mesh sometimes so especially when you're working with uh, really thin or like slim um, muscle groups such as the soleus um, compared to the gastrocnemius and the uh, the other muscle groups such as the plantaris as well. Um, so it would have been much easier if I blocked it out. Now, I can still do it without the block out. I just have to be at a high resolution and you could also do it too. Uh, but for just for future, in the future, if you're ever going to do something like this, just might as well just block out everything that you can. By the way, it's 
also important because when you dynamize things, it kind of automatically makes topology uh, dependent on the major mesh around it. So blocking out really helps with just having an automated uh, topology uh, done for you by ZBrush. Um, and topology is really important if you're going to uh, end up bringing the mesh resolution down and trying to animate it. When it comes to the head of most echo shades you'll be working on, you have to remember that not everything is just muscle. There are bones protruding outwards, such as the uh, zygomatic. So you just have to find ways of sculpting everything together. Um, you can either do an entire sculpt. You can sculpt everything um, by yourself, by hand, manually, or you could you can have a mixture of different sub tools, such as like a skull, and then you sculpt around that with putting in muscles, like such as the masseter or the um, temporalis and whatnot. Such as the, for example, the first mountain lion video um, that I worked on in Blender, where I uh, had a mixture of the skeleton and the muscles all together uh, because it was way easier to do it that way um so you just have to remember that not everything in the echo shea is just all muscle there are bones that you can see here and there usually for muscles that overlap um other muscles or other bones all at once such as the zygomaticus that overlaps the bone and the masseter on the side there. Uh, what you can do to get this um, feature, you can actually mask off the, the area that it would be, and then you could just come in with uh, a clay buildup and start sculpting over that. Or you could just actually extrude it out by pulling it with the um, movement tool. Um, so that's an easier way of doing it rather than breaking the forms around it such like if you made a mistake for example sculpting over the masseter now you have to like go back in and smooth it out or um, un un undo so many times so this is really easy to do it this way yes you, you normally do this especially with like really thin muscles or like really thin fibers around or anything like that it's way easier to do it this way sometimes um, I tend to do like layers so that I don't forget where it was or uh, it's easier to access later on so I could just go in and then click it again and it automatically masks the layer and then I could just sculpt it and work on those details a little more so usually what you'll see me do for animals when it comes to paws, feet, and sometimes the mouth, um, you'll see that I normally have like a pad or like their actual paw around like a glove. So I wouldn't actually go in and sculpt the skeleton and the bones and everything. So um, in the future, we probably will do that. Um, but for now, we're not really focusing on like those kind of details. We're just focusing on the major muscles and, and everything that the entire echo shade. And usually with some echo shades, you'll see them do that. Like, especially with humans, you'll normally have them focus on the major parts of the body. And then the hands will just be layered with actual skin or things like that. And sometimes the mouth uh, for most animals or the head, uh, the entire head. And then the body is just an echo shade. Um, so I don't usually go into the really nitty gritty details for the paws, um, but in the future, I'm sure that we will go into detail like that and covering things like veins and nerves and everything, but that's for a later stage. So now at this stage, we are just refining things. We are basically done with the mesh. But um, they, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for more uh, updates and whatever. So the this base mesh is basically done. And it will be sent off to um, having finer details. We're going to work on it later on. And then it's going to have way more details than this. But for now, it is done. But 
you can always revisit your your mesh whatever you're working on you can always revisit it you can always go back and change things uh, that's totally fine um the only thing you shouldn't be doing is this isn't the stage where you should be changing your silhouette entirely you can change the pose you can pose it in a different pose uh, and whatever and then you can edit that pose but you shouldn't be adding things like um new sub tools like adding a sphere onto the head or something like that uh, and then changing the silhouette entirely you cannot do those kind of things because you you're just gonna lose all your subdivision levels within zbrush now it's just all about refining the smaller details